of the network is really to collaborate in clinical trials in lupus nephritis, primarily investigator-initiated clinical trials that might not be done by industry and might not be done by anyone if we didn't do them, and also to collaborate in developing better approaches to the design of clinical nephritis trials. So the Lupus Nephritis Trials Network now includes 156 investigators at 31 countries. Uh, that's remarkable growth over the first three years. Uh, our first project is complete. It was an important project that was dedicated to addressing some of the key issues that the FDA is struggling with in trying to decide how lupus clinical trials should be done. Uh, that project, which is called an evidence-based set of recommendations uh, for uh, uh, evaluation of lupus nephritis trials has been submitted for publication and will be the first product. Um, and it, uh, it's special because two years ago, uh, maybe even a little longer than two years ago, the FDA withdrew its guidance document on lupus nephritis because they were uncertain what short-term outcome measures would actually correlate with the important outcomes in lupus, which is how patients do in the long run, whether they end up on dialysis, whether they end up healthy. That was withdrawn because the key questions weren't answered. And through an international collaboration, using data from trials that had been done all around the world, this group of investigators, led by Maria Dallara at UCSF and Megan Mackey at the Feinstein Institute in New York and Brad Roven, uh, in Ohio State and Fred Husio in Belgium, analyzed long-term outcomes data, correlated it with how people had done in the course of clinical trials, and established, in my mind, very conclusively what the outcome measures of a clinical trial should be if we want to have confidence that they will predict good outcomes in the long run. FDA has been engaged in that process. We believe that the results of this trial will have a very direct impact on policy and hopefully will shape the next guidance document. So we view that as a very proud accomplishment in the first few years. The other accomplishments are the launch of three trials with independent funding, investigator-initiated trials of agents that uh, were not going to be studied in this way if we didn't do them. Um, and most recently, uh, the Lupus Nephritis Network has successfully completed for NIH funding to be part of what's called the Accelerating Medicines Partnership, which is a partnership between some of the lupus organizations and the NIH and several biopharmaceutical companies to look carefully in a way that's never been done before at tissue where the disease is happening, in this case kidney tissue, and really outline the mechanisms of disease with the idea that that will identify pathways that should be therapeutic targets. And that's a, an immense accomplishment, actually, for the lupus community for the following reason. When the NIH decided to look a few years ago for select few diseases that they thought the time was right to really identify the pathways in tissue and make a big leap forward in therapy, they identified four diseases. One was Alzheimer's disease. One was type 2 diabetes, and one was rheumatoid arthritis, and the last was lupus. And we are proud because we don't think they would have chosen lupus if there wasn't an organized community that was in a position to provide the specimens they needed on people with lupus nephritis to do this kind of study.